This is JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals, and JSA Radio, the voice for telecom on iHeartRadio. I'm Dean Perrine, Vice President at JSA, and your moderator here today. On behalf of our team here at JSA, welcome to a very special virtual roundtable. Our topic today, the Cisco acquisition of Broadsoft, perspectives from the other side. As the roundtable topic suggests, today we're talking about the Cisco and Broadsoft acquisition and its implications on the competitive landscape, particularly as they relate to alternative UCAS providers in the space. Longtime competitors and partners of Broadsoft will face new challenges as well as a host of new opportunities. These opportunities will directly impact the carriers and the large enterprise customers they serve. And uh, today's discussion will explore both the acquisition implications on the UCAS space generally and the impact and opportunities created for both alternative UCAS providers and their carrier customers. Our panelists today are Mr. Anand Bush. Anand is the CEO and co-founder of NetSapiens. Based in San Diego, California, NetSapiens offers service providers and large enterprise customers a suite of unified communication services and feature sets, including voice over IP, hosted PBX, SIP trunking, contact center services, device provisioning, multi-tenant user portals, and much more. Also, we have Mr. John Carter. John is the CEO of Tier Zero. Tier Zero is a Los Angeles-based internet provider offering a full suite of business phone and internet services to Los Angeles, Irvine, Orange County, Long Beach, Santa Ana, Pasadena, San Diego, and all of Southern California. And last but certainly not least, Mr. Chuck Griffin. Chuck is the CEO of Impact Telecom. Based in Irving, Texas, Impact Telecom is a cloud communications company serving thousands of business customers with voice over IP solutions for over 11 years. Gentlemen, welcome to JSA TV, and let's go ahead and get started. Anand, I'm going to start with you. Um, as the CEO of a company that has both competed and partnered with Broadsoft, why don't you give our viewers um, a quick overview of the acquisition and what you see as kind of the biggest challenges in the competitive UCAS space? Sure. Thanks, uh, Dean. Thanks for uh, uh, having me on here. Um, NetSapiens actually has been a longtime uh, admirer of what Broadsoft has uh, done for the marketplace. Um, and then we've actually seen them uh, both obviously grow and push the Tier 1 uh, service providers. We obviously focus on, on you know, tier two and, and smaller service providers. I think one of the things that, um, you know, uh, they've done is actually set the bar for the level of quality, level of service, level of platform, uh, feature, feature functionality, and the growth in the marketplace. I think what this does, um, really from an M&A standpoint, it, it, uh, it speaks to the validation of what uh, cloud-hosted uh, UC is all about. Um, I think uh, you know we'll get to some of that uh, a little bit later as well. I think you 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 have some questions teed up for um, you know for the clients of ours here at all. Um, but I think one of the things that we've seen is that we've worked um, in addition with you know clients or service providers that have really kind of been out evolved by Broadsoft, if you will, in terms of what Broadsoft provides. And so we've been uh, fortunate enough to have clients that. Um, actually own and operate both a, a Broadsoft platform and an SAPIENS platform, um, both in conjunction. So we've been able to see what they've done uh, in the marketplace. In terms of challenges in the UCAS space, I think the, 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 the challenges still continue in that there's still a big uh, shortfall in uh, the migration of uh, work going from premise-based services. And so uh, there's a lot of work to be done in that space. Uh, and so that continues to be the biggest challenge. How do you address uh, the, the, the so many, uh, uh, if you will, disparate needs in the marketplace for unified communications as a service rather than what we considered, you know, a plain old telephone service? Um, and Broadsoft has kind of led the, led the charge. Uh, the Cisco acquisition, again, validates that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the challenges that will exist is to try to, you know, help our clients understand what that all means. Excellent, Anand. A perfect primer for my next question. Chuck, this one's for you. Um, as a former customer of Broadsoft, why don't you give our viewers some insights from an end user or general carrier perspective? Tell us about your selection process and how other carriers might benefit from your experiences, particularly as they relate to UCAS. 
Thanks, Dean. Appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity. Obviously, um, we've uh, we've been doing voice or IP for quite some time at a carrier level. So back to 2001 um, at ICG Communications, we had gone through a vocal data platform, um, voice pipe. For those that uh, remember the name, we we did a cilantro platform with um, the three tone product out of level three. Um, moved on to the Broadsoft platform in early days in uh, the early 2000s and spent a lot of time in that Broadsoft community. Um, so when we switched uh, platforms and we kind of made some changes here recently with Impact Telecom, um, we had a couple of key ingredients that were really important to us, just having all of that background. Fast forward to today, we went through you know, investigating Metaswitch and GenBand and uh, of course Broadsoft again and we landed on the NetSapiens platform um, really two big primary drivers of that. Number one, we wanted to own the technology. We're a carrier class environment with a carrier class network that's geo redundant. Very uh, easy for us to uh, integrate that to our, our network. So the servers, all of the software packages, the revisions that take place all sit on our network. Um, so managing that technology was important to us. Um, the second piece to that was that um, it be simple. So um, one of the broad soft issues that we at least ran into as we were part of that was just the complication of uh, bifurcating pieces of the broad soft license in order to be able to accommodate the end users. And so for us, it was critical that we had a, a software package that was easy and simple to use. So as we settled on that tapings, those are the big drivers of why we did. Um, so from a carrier perspective, anyway, that, that's probably how we got through the selection process. Mm -hmm. uh, Real important to have that longevity that's there. Um, you know, you look at end of life on the cilantro, end of life on the vocal data platform. Those are things that, you know, we had to look at and feel very stable and comfortable that there was alternative solution to Broadsoft. Knowing that Broadsoft has probably 45% of the UK has at least the voice services market in that space today. I think it's it's it was pretty critical for us to have a solid background or you know, performance piece in that space. Um, so. Uh, allowing us to be flexible for our customers. The NetSapiens platform gave us sort of an oversubscription capability where we can um, make every single end user happy based on the breadth of the feature set that we had sitting out there. So selection, of, and that's what I mean by simplistic, is that we had access to everything we needed for simplicity's sake to accommodate our end users. And the one thing we know about end users is that every single one of them is different. So as we put a business end user into place, uh, they have completely different and uh, separate needs than the one that we did just the day or two before. So um, I think if I relate it to the consolidation now, right, the Broadsoft versus and Cisco consolidation, I think it, it does sort of fast track things in the UCAS marketplace. Um, the credibility that Cisco brings to this uh, certainly uh, draws attention to it, and I think it uh, may fast track in the sort of the adopt um, adoption of the UCAS market, the, the cloud-based markets. And it also brings a completely different um, uh, distribution model, right? That's probably the one thing that is very different between those two. So as they consolidate, I think you're going to see this change in the environment where MSPs and integration uh, companies now become a little bit more equipped to be the installation and maybe even the end user referral or the end user sales for the UCAS marketplace. So I think it does change the landscape pretty dramatically. Um, how that affects us, probably um, we'll look at it and, uh, and partner more deeply with NetSapiens in order to be able to, to manage to that. Um, I think the endpoint providers probably become a little bit more, uh, that, that's where they will find the difficulties. So your uh, polycoms and yay links of the world who have integrated very in depth to the Broadsoft market uh, will become, uh, they'll, they'll see a tougher road because of the integration that Cisco now will be able to penetrate. So how that affects things on a go forward basis for them remains to be seen. That integration still has to take place clearly. the. Uh, the merger acquisition has to happen in order for that to take place. But uh, I think people are starting to prepare for that now. So for us, um, it's business as usual because we feel very comfortable with the application that we chose on a go-forward basis. 
brilliant insights. We totally appreciate um, that, um, that level of insight. But John, it's, it's your turn now. Why don't you talk to our viewers a little bit about um, what, the, uh, what the acquisition means to you and to companies like NetSapiens. Um, are there, what, what are the opportunities? What do the opportunities look like for, for folks like yourself? Well, thanks, Dean, for having me on also. And um, I think I need to explain just a little bit about um, our history. We, we're a, we were an IP company only from 1997 to 2005. And so when we decided to get into voice, we didn't have a lot of voice uh, expertise on staff. So we chose Broadsoft because it was the best of breed. You know, we wanted to partner with the best, and we really felt like that they were going to gobble up the market, which they did. And um, they, were, they were a great partner for us for 10 years. But going forward, um, the, their pricing model that they, um, that they had, which is a, a license-based uh, per seat model, and then when the unified communication kind of uh, kind of heated up a little bit more, um, and you saw you know companies like Ring Central and you know and other, these other countries, uh, other companies that were a little like not, not as advanced as, as, as Broadsoft, now they're starting to offer unified communications and the bundles that people were getting, that the customers were getting, and that was, was getting uh, back to us was essentially that this was being bundled in for free. This is what, you know, whether they use it or not, people want unified communications. It's the buzzword today and our customers, our customers wanted it. So when we went to Broadsoft and said they were a little late to the game with unified communications for their for the for the Broadsoft product, um, their their suggestion was to offer us something that was going to cost us twice as much as what we were paying for before. So that really wasn't a great business model for us anymore, and it was a really really great run. And um, we were actually not happy to to shop around at the time and do a whole migration of our whole customer base over to a new uh, a new platform. Um, but we, you know, but we went through quite a quite a long selection process, and we landed on NetSapiens for a number of reasons. One was their concurrent call model, the pricing model versus the per license model, um, allowed us as a service provider to to have more margin and and more flexibility in what we um, in, in, in our offering to our customers, and and that was a big advantage. And also a big advantage for us was is that. NetSapiens was a little more poised as a smaller company like us, more flexible, more nimble, people that we could reach out onto the phone. Um, Broadsoft had kind of become such a large company that, it, um, you know, it, took, it actually took them eight months to get back to us um, on the unified communications uh, offer. And in the meantime, we had already moved on <laughs> with NetSapien and, and, be, and very happy about it. But the, but the challenges and, and the opportunities um, that we see, you know, for th these, these, these kind of mergers always create opportunities in the marketplace for the tier two and tier three, the kind of markets that, that, um, that NetSapien is providing. They've, um, they really have their eye on the, on the tier one thing, so it creates a big opportunity for us. And then, and then also, um, I think some of the challenges are going to be um, some of the kind of like products that they already have, like the Sparks and the WebEx and, you know, products like this, and like how do you differentiate those with the Broadsoft UC and, you know, and without confusing the marketplace and the customers. And, um, and it's, it's just part of life in big mergers like that. You know, it can't be helped. You know, they've acquired a lot of different companies, a lot of different platforms and software, you know, and they have it out with different customers. So now this is another one. And without really knowing what their, all the strategy sessions are behind the scenes with uh, Cisco, it's hard to know what, where they're going to go with that, how they're going to integrate all these different platforms together. Um, but, you know, as we've seen with lots of these types of mergers, it's going to be a little bit confusing for people, which creates more opportunity for the smaller providers like us. So we're actually quite happy about it. <laughs> Excellent, John. Thanks. And again, um, spectacular uh, feedback there. Um, but also that really truly does beg the question back to you, Anand. Um, there, do you see, do you foresee there being a trickle down effect? So perhaps former Broadsoft customers or customers who at least see that um, there is industry UCAS consolidation um, looking, uh, taking longer looks at tier two and tier three providers like NetSapiens. Yeah, actually, I think uh, um, if, if you look at the uh, analysts 
working with uh, uh, Broadsoft actually over the last couple of years, what we've found is that, um, you know, just last year, I believe, I think one of the, the, the public reports out that said, you know, uh, we're kind of three to five years away from cloud UC offerings um, really overtaking premise-based offerings. And so, you know, the trickle-down in my mind is, you know, Cisco jumping in kind of validates, uh, I think as Chuck uh, was saying earlier, validates um, in, a, in a pretty significant way that, um, uh, you know, um, this, this is a, a massive growth opportunity that exists. And I think the question to, to really ask is whether, you know, that migration to the cloud is going to happen faster. Um, especially with, you know, with the deeper pockets and the wider channels uh, that somebody like Cisco brings to the table. Now, that being said, uh, Jim actually uh, spoke to uh, the added confusion that may actually exist uh, in the market. And so um, because of the, uh, the variety of, of uh, UC he has and how, how will that interplay with UC1, um, you know, so on and so forth. Um, but I think, the, you know, the, the um, you know, the trickle down and the, and the opportunities that are presented by the acquisition, I think, allow uh, the smaller, more agile companies, um, service providers, if you will, uh, uh, to, to really look at the gap, you know, like start defining the, the, the pending gaps that may exist because of all of the confusion in the marketplace. Um, start looking at uh, developing your own value proposition. Look at you know, a, a very few uh, uh, angles that right now you can outshine uh, your local re Cisco reseller because it will be a, a conjunction of Cisco bringing to the table now both um, whatever Cisco brings to the table to the enterprise or the, or the small enterprise and then also whatever, whatever Broadsoft brings to the uh, uh, table. Now, that being said, Cisco has done a fair bit of evolving themselves. And uh, however, um, you know, uh, gravity is, is pretty tough to fight against. And M&As of this size uh, really take a significant amount of time and effort um, before a steady state mode of operation is, uh, is reached. And so uh, until that point, uh, it's a great opportunity for, uh, for service providers um, uh, to, to, to really educate their markets and to understand, right, first and foremost, um, really try to be crystal clear of where the differentiators are between what they provide today uh, and what they can provide going forward, but then also take a look at um, really the opportunity uh, to, to allow Cisco to help educate the market as well. Um, so, yeah, definitely there's going to be a, a, a trickle down for sure. Excellent, Anand. I'm going to stick with you because you bring up some very, very good points. Um, because you all serve um, different different customers. What would you say is the, the single um, biggest takeaway that your customer should see from this this consolidation or specifically the Broadsoft Cisco acquisition? What's the, what's the big takeaway for your customers? So 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 it's so it's interesting, right? Um, I think uh, as a follow up to what I had just mentioned, you know, our our service provider clients, if you will, um, historically, if I step back a little bit and I and I speak to, you know, the the, the general market, um, uh, if you will, uh, perception with Cisco, as many many could argue, it's very much a love hate relationship with Cisco, and in general this may very quickly become a, a philosophical and a practical war between best of breed versus uh, homogeneous Cisco only implications for, for our, for our providers. I think uh, in essence, it's a, it's a massive opportunity for the community to continue marching down that mission uh, of providing specialized UCAS uh, choice um, for the user, um, you know, for the end user, uh, that they provide business to. So I, I think that's probably the single biggest uh, takeaway is um, certainly it's a, it's a threat, uh, but I think we can leverage the threat because there's going to be an awful lot of noise created from it. Uh, and the opportunity is to be very crystal clear about um, what we can provide as a community of service providers that really a combination of this size and not. Excellent. Thank you very much, Anand. Chuck, same question. Biggest takeaway for the customers you serve? Yeah, so uh, I, I'll uh, jump on top of a word that Anand used a couple times there, and that's opportunity. Um, 
for us, I think that it really does bring some credibility and some legitimacy to the cloud evolution that's taken place. And we overuse the word cloud a lot. But to the end users who are lagging behind from a technology standpoint, the true end users of the services, they're just catching up to those buzzwords. You know, we've been living inside that cloud now for a few years now, whether it be data backup or 4G wireless or the video consumption or hosted voice over IP. All of that now is coming to fruition, and guys like Cisco and Broadsoft coming together really do put a, a stamp of legitimacy to that, that poise. Uh, for us, it's now just the capitalizing on the fact that that evolution is taking place. So um, we got to get on our horse and get better at uh, integrating things that we're not doing that are cloud-based because uh, that wave is coming very quickly. That marketplace is uh, growing very, very fast. And, uh, you know, we're happy to be in the position we are with the solution that we have um, because I think we service the needs of the end user, especially, again, given that lag that takes place in their environment. But as that becomes a little bit more uh, consolidated, we're going we're gonna to be sitting right in the sweet spot to be able to service those needs. Uh, the only other thing I would add to that was going back to my former point, which is I think it brings uh, larger distribution networks together in order to be able to accomplish that thing. So it, it, the opportunity for us is to reach out to areas uh, of distribution that we necessarily haven't tapped prior, but uh, we intend to do. Obviously, this uh, calls attention to kind of that hardware and distribution network that uh, is different than what we have today. So we're looking forward to that opportunity to capitalize on that opportunity. We can be flexible enough, I think, to get there. So for us, I think it just you know it boils down to let's uh, let's get on our horse and, and really create what we can out of that opportunity. Outstanding, Chuck. Thank you very much. John, you have the final word here. Um, biggest takeaway uh, for your customers? Well, I think it's I think it's all about awareness. So you know these th this type of merger is it, you know if you look back when Vonage you know went to Vonage in business and and there was just all these ads on TV all the time. You know when we were trying to educate our customers about VoIP, for instance. Um, you know, it, it was some, it's sometimes a challenge, but now, but now they're starting to get, you know, these, these advertisements all the time. They're seeing on TV. It's becoming kind of a normal kind of conversation instead of this new black box thing that we're talking about. So this, this Cisco um, Broadsoft merger, you know, as they, re, you know, reach out and, and build more awareness in the, in the business community, in the enterprise community, it just helps us even more to be able to slide into their kind of wake. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Um, gentlemen, that is really all the time we have. Unfortunately, I feel like we could have talked um, all afternoon, but um, that's going to be a wrap for today. Um, thank you very, very much for being uh, with us today. I appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. We'll see you soon.